So I'm right there where I'm going to cut. When I cut into a floor, I don't want to cut deep. I want to cut the thickness of the floorboard. So I'm going to adjust my saw to the thickness of the floorboard. I get a, for a piece of flooring, sit my saw on top of it and just drop the base of it so the blade is more shallow, as you can see. I'm not cutting through the floor joist. That's the structure. I've cut directly over the top of the floor joist. So this floor is supported. This side is supported. This one I'm going to lift up. And we'll see what's going on underneath this wall and why it's dropped so much. Okay, we've opened up the floor all in one piece. A little bit of damp. You can see from the way the soil is, it's dried out a lot and then got wet and dried and got wet. So, gotta work out where that water's coming from. Cause that's not a good sign. Could be one of the storm water pipes is broken and water's running underneath the house normally doesn't sink like that so it's got to be a contributing factor the brick pier it's right under the wall on the corner and it's sunk a lot just here on this door so I'm thinking definitely there's roof load on top of this wall right here and it's not supported so later I'm gonna to have to go inside the roof and have a look and then if that's the case, I'm gonna to have to jack that up in the corner and put a, um, a concrete stump just to take the load. I managed to sneak down this little hole here. Lucky I'm skinny. Sometimes you really have to climb under a house to see exactly what's going on. You can't just say, nah, I'm not getting under there. So have a look. It looks pretty straight. Everything looks pretty good. I reckon maybe have to go up minimal. Now have a look at that. The brick wall is not built straight and the floor is on an angle. Now here, this wall, there's no vents. Mainly because there's a concrete slab there. But really you should have vents, as many vents as possible. Keep air circulation, but it's actually not too bad under here. Seems a little bit damp, you know, like the ground sort of looks wet, but when you touch it, it's not wet. This one here is the one that's gonna to have to be lifted up, especially right here at this point. It's dropped heaps. And I reckon it's because they've put load on it. It's all gonna to have to be lifted up a couple of mil. You can see what's happened. It's the old water pipe. And that's just rusted straight through. And this hole underneath the house is filled up with water. That's why the ground's like this. Because it got flooded and then it dried. And then it all cracked like like the desert it's amazing and now we have to just jack everything up and put blocks under the bearers i started with some smaller wedges because that's all i had okay so we've done this one this one's straight we put a nice big thick block there it's actually out of this stuff. An old um, post from a fence, best material to use. And you can see how much it's dropped. We're gonna jack it up and we're gonna do the same. I'm gonna put a block underneath it. Okay, so we've jacked up this corner. We've got the laser right on the edge of that bearer. 
Now we're going to measure that gap. We'll cut a small block to fit perfectly in there and then we'll let it back down again. Then that's done. And then we'll do the other side because there's a join. That's how we go. So here's our square block. It's actually 18 mil, it had to go up. So we cut one perfectly to 18 mil. We just fit it in there. Get a hammer, just tap it in. It's got it all the way to the end. And then we just let the jack down. And that's it. Ends up nice. Now we'll do the other side of that bearer to make it even, and then we'll work our way back. So we'll go to the next one, we'll do repeat the same process. Okay, so we've got the next one ready. It's all jacked up, it's the right level. Got our block. So we're just gonna put it in there. should be all the way to the other side. Yes, it is. Okay, that's perfect. Take the jack out. And that's done, it's completed.